we're back. Do we still have a connection? Still good? Yeah, okay, so I apologize for, I don't know why it's not connecting, but hopefully this is better. I got off the Wi-Fi. Um, I won't be able to post the other one because we trashed it, but the short opening intro is part five, welcome back. This is the final video of this beautiful quilt club of Brave and what we're working on today before assembly is cutting the big triangles from this gorgeous Sunseekers fabric and cutting the squares out of it. Um, those, those triangles go up in the corners of the quilt and the squares kind of mark this center um, on point sort of design and a lot of it gets covered up by these Dresden fans. And I mentioned earlier, but that video is trash due to poor connection, that I did fussy cut, obviously, these triangles and the squares just to get flowers in specific um, positions on the fabric. But I do want to say that this fabric has such an evenly dispersed amount of color and design on that black background that if you don't feel like fussy cutting it or worrying about it, don't do it. Like it's still going to look beautiful no matter how you cut this fabric. Um, I just really focused on getting these three same flowers on that angle because that's how I just thought it was pretty cool that the design of the fabric had those three flowers sitting at a perfect 45 degree angle. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm fussy cutting. And it mentions that in your instructions for part five. You can see over here I have the three flowers again, but the direction of the fabric has turned just because of how we fit those triangles on this three and a half yard piece. But it still gives the same, gives the same overall color balance. Um, I've got one of them marked out. I've got three marked out, but I marked this one out with washi tape so you can see a little better. The way that you set up getting those three flowers most easily is by putting one of them in the corner. Okay, so this right angled edge right here is sort of where I start, and I'm gonna cut a live one for you, but I start by putting my grid as square off the edge of the fabric selvage as I can um, by putting that red flower about an inch away from each edge. Okay, so you can see there that I've got it kind of evenly nestled into the corner. And then by doing that, it's automatically going to include these three here. So your instructions will tell you to find that corner and measure 29 inches off of it and mark, and then measure 29 inches off of it the other direction and mark. And those two marked points of 29 inches are going to be the end and beginning points of your angled line, okay? So I used a light color chalk to mark mine. I've got one, two, three marked. Um, you can kind of see the light color chalk there, but I'm going to go ahead and show you cutting the fourth one so that you can see in real life. So we have a top triangle and then kind of a triangle that sits underneath it. You can see by looking at the schematic here. Okay. This is how we get them all fit in. So where your top flower sits on your yardage will be a little different for everyone, just depending on the um, cut of your fabric. But, so I'm kind of doing an underside triangle. Um, so again, I'm using this square grid, okay? This is a 16 and a half inch grid. It's not 29 inches. So you just do a little math in your head and say, okay, 29 inches minus 16 and a half, I'm still gonna need another 12 and a half inches from this to make 29. But I'm gonna start with this red flower right here in my corner. And I know that if I start there with it about an inch away from each edge, it's also going to help me include these three red flowers along that angled edge. So to kind of help me stay square, I'm kind of setting this right here, this other grid, and I'm going to tilt that a little bit. So now I'm more square on the grain of fabric. Okay. So this is my corner. I'm going to go ahead and mark this corner. I'm using this pink chalk here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and mark this corner. And this side too. Okay, but that's only 16 and a half inches. I need another 12 and a half. So I'm gonna make sure that this first grid stays still. I'm gonna stack this one onto it, butt it up, and then I'm gonna go ahead and mark a little 12 and a half inch line out here. Of course, that happened right on a pink. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it happened on pink fabric, but there it is. But I can take my grid now and continue my marked line all the way out here. Let's mark it with a pen so you can see. All right, so I'm marking my 12 and a half inch line. Really picky, okay? So I've got 29 inches here now. Yay, good job. Now I need it on the other side. I'm gonna walk around to the side of the table. And I'm gonna set this down right here. I'm gonna be careful not to move the first grid. Let's see. Oh wait. Oh, oh yeah, I was like, it's on this side. <laughs> it's going this way. Totally, totally going this way. Oh my god. So I need to go on this edge, not that edge. Wall. Okay, turn it around. 12 and a half, so I don't have to subtract from 24. So, as I was saying, I have 29 going that way, and now I'm going to have 29 going this way. Okay, sweating the details here, people. I'm stopping right here. That's my 29, as noted by my 12 and a half inch mark, right here. Okay, so now I've got a 29 inch line going in a perpendicular direction. And it's the end of those points that is gonna give me that angle, um, the starting and the ending point for my angle. Now, this isn't 29 inches either, and where on earth do I go with this to get the right angle? Do I like aim? No. This grid, and hopefully one that you have in your possession as well, has a 45 degree line down the middle of it. And to begin my angled line, I'm gonna lay that 45 degree angled line right on top of my chalk line with the ending point at that other little mark that I made, okay? That's my 29 inches. And that doesn't get me all the way there, and it doesn't need to, but it does get me on the right angle to start that line, okay? So now I'm marking my angled line, just a portion of it, and i got to move all the way, well, I think I can reach this, actually. I'm going to do the same thing here, but I need to line the point of it up with that, okay? So, reaching, reaching, reaching. This little clover tool is really cool. They come, I think, in pink and blue as well. It's just loose chalk inside, and it has a little wheel. I like this compared to pencils and pens because pencils and pens, and even chalk sometimes, like the harder chalk, it kind of drags your fabric. This is just like a little wheel that glides along, and I really dig that. All right, so I've got that line marked now, and all I have to do is connect them, and they're friends. And that's it. Okay, so I am gonna cut this. Have I, there's my scissors. I'm gonna cut this out with scissors instead of a rotary because I'd have to keep moving this mat around. Um, I might wanna use that for something, so I'm gonna cut around that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like the rest of you. I have loads of fabric, but I still don't like to cut through a flower if I don't have to. Juliana, do you remember the bears at the fabric store? Oh, yeah. What did I say? Okay. Well, first of all, I called the fabric fabric. Fabric, yeah, it had a V. <laughs> like, just like a Greek, there's no B. <laughs> fabric. But I had Juliana at Hancock's Fabric when she was like three and a half. 
and they would let her sit up on the table as long as my arms were around her and watch them cut my fabric. And she wanted this bear fabric. It had these little teddy bears all over it. But she got utterly freaked out when the scissors went right through the bear. <laughs> Why are you cutting the bear? She started crying. And then I could tell the woman Loretta, I still remember Loretta so well, because she used to love when we came in. She stopped for a minute and thought like, I think she was trying to think of a way to cut around the bears and still do her job. But she was like, oh, mommy's going to sew the bears back together when you get home. And I'm like, oh, thanks, Loretta. That sounds easy. Do, 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 do. Okay, so this is our lovely triangle. Go team. I do all my worst work on camera, so don't pay attention to the imperfect um, situation down there. But here's our triangle. Not too bad, right? That's pretty easy peasy. Now, once we have our four triangles cut, the other thing that we need from this fabric is the 12 and a half inch squares that are gonna go in this position and here and in the other two spots. Most of us have a 12 and a half inch grid, so that's a pretty simple situation as long as you know where your rotary is. And <laughs> what we want in this is to get that yellow flower um, in one corner so that we can have it sitting in all those points around the quilt. And so I can get one here, here, there, and there. So that's basically how that goes. Um, I'm gonna grab this rotary and I'll just go ahead and cut that. <clears throat> I don't need to mark that, really. I'm again just keeping that yellow flower about an inch away from this edge and an inch away from that edge. <laughs> am I on the mat or am I cutting through my table now? Okay. <laughs> I never know, especially with a giant piece of fabric on the table. Hopefully, I was going to say, I think I grabbed a rotary that needs to have a new blade on it. Classic, on camera, cutting little bits. I'm just like you. I specifically last night put a new blade in my rotary and now I don't know where I put that one but <laughs> in the smaller one. Okay, so. Okay, now, okay, so. All right, I'm gonna get all this, <laughs> I'm gonna get all this other stuff out of the way. And then we're gonna talk about assembly and all the other parts and how they come together. Um, do, 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 do. All right, so. Let me get these down with me here. Okay, so when we go to sew, um, both of these pieces, four of these and four of these, are gonna get those Dresden fans that you've already worked on, okay? Um, this one with the echinacea and that grassy giggle fabric is gonna go on the square. So whatever method you would like to applique those down with, you can do that this month or next month or whenever you get to part five. Um, I stitch mine down by hand. Um, I would just use like a, you can put a couple pins just to keep this in position. You just wanna be sure that you're lining up your um, square edges of this Dresden with the square edges of the um, Sun Seekers block. Now, mine is not perfect here, right? Because I'm a human being. And I, um, I just like move it so that it's as square as possible in line with these edges. And so that I know when two seams come together, quarter inch seams come together here, that I'm gonna be catching um, so if those seams are kind of falling on the edge of this grid, I'm gonna be catching all those kind of inconsistencies in my points um, in the seam. So even if you have to scoot it down to be sure, ain't no thing, okay? So you can go ahead and stitch that. And once you have that stitched, if you'd like to, you can come back and cut out all this excess fabric because there's no need to have all that extra layer there. You can cut out all that excess fabric 
Um, or you can wait until it's assembled and you're sure you have that seam and you can come back and cut the excess out of the background. So you can save, save the life of a purple flower. <laughs> and you can give it, we're saving lives here. And you can give it a new life in a different project, okay? So, because that's a lot of extra fabric. I don't really bother to cut out backgrounds when it's something small, but that's a pretty significant piece times four. Um, now, while it might be tempting to go ahead and settle, um, this other Dresden fan, which comes up here in this corner, I really don't want you to do that yet, okay? Because this is the very outer corner of your quilt. And um, I'd like for you to get through the entire assembly of this quilt and get everything trimmed before you know what your final corner is gonna be. Because this is a bias edge. It's gonna get sewn on in the assembly as like basically the last assembly step. And um, just in case all your pieces come together in a way that's not absolutely perfect, you might be coming along and trimming a new corner and you certainly wouldn't want this to be sitting sewn there. Um, so save that basically for very last. Um, but this little map right here shows you sort of how everything is gonna be coming together. So we already have this square in the center and we have our D and E blocks. We have four each of the D and E blocks. And you'll just wanna pay particular attention. You're gonna make pairs out of these D, E blocks and um, sew them to the center and then make another pair and sew them to the center. Just pay close attention to how you're orienting things, okay? Because they'll match either way you do it. But what we want is for those aqua um, pieces. Am I lying to you right now? No. What we want... <laughs> I totally just lied on camera. Oh my God. What we want is for the orange and pink pieces to come together. Okay. So just keep an eye on your map and that's how those are going to come together. So what it actually is, is the aqua sit on the outside. Okay. And then what it does is really cool because it kind of creates this whole continuous design between these purple pieces. Like it was always like that but it's really a print heading in two different directions. So you put your D and E together as pairs. You make four pairs to go against the center, and then you do another set of pairs. And then once these are done, this set of pairs is gonna get one of these on this side and one on that side. It's opposite. It's opposite. Upside down. I think so, yeah. The center of the flower goes against the that one. Oh, did I do it wrong again? Yeah, I feel like it goes like this. Oh, you're totally right. <laughs> <laughs> totally <honest>. Sorry. <laughs> I've been outed. Okay, so it goes like this and like this. So two pairs stay just by themselves to get attached to the center, and then the other two get these fans on each end, okay? And you repeat that foursome, and then that's how you create this entirely big center okay and to that we start getting the borders all right so we have one border that we sew on to that whole center and the opposite to the whole center and then we have another border where we add these little cornerstone pieces okay on each end and then we do that with two of them and then that comes together and then I like how I'm just telling you exactly. This is like a dramatic interpretation <laughs> of what you can read with, with like multimedia presentation of how it's all gonna come together. But the reason I wanna walk you through this is because I wanna show you what happens at the corners of those borders because this gets a serious um, trimming. So if you can imagine with me, we've got, we kind of just faked a partial one here so that I could walk you through it. If you can imagine with me, this guy is here, basically. Juliana, do I have it right? Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I'm mimicking this sort of area right here, okay? So that little yellow flower is sitting there. 
So once all your borders are sewn on, you've got the purple ones on, and then you've got the, what happens is you get the yellow ones on, you have this one, and then this one. And when you place those, and your directions will tell you this, when you place those long borders here, you're gonna find the center point of them and, and attach that center point to the middle seam between D and E, okay? Once you've got that one on, you're gonna find the center point of this and attach it to the center point of that, okay? So you're always finding your centers on that length to put it on. And what it's gonna create actually is kind of an irregular edge that might make you feel a little bit freaked out, but all this is actually gonna get trimmed off because what we need to start creating is a quilt that has a straight edge, right? So you'll see in the assembly that this edge right here as you go is just going to be kind of like hanging out, but that's what's going to get trimmed off. And I show you how to do that here, okay? So you're going to create the entire quilt top with that big center and one, two, three borders, okay? And it's just going to look like a giant square on point, or it's kind of going to look like a quilt until we decide to start making it go the other way with these triangles. But we, before we do, we're going to give it a new edge. And where that new edge is, is based on this point right here. We want this to be, this little point right here actually marks the whole new edge. And so because of that, we want to, let's see. I know. <laughs> Here we go. There's the 45. All right. So most of your cutting grids are going to have a 45 degree line on them. And that's what we're looking for to set onto this edge. Because when we're done, we want this seam to be sitting at 45 degrees compared to the edges. So I'm laying it down right there, but I'm going to push it down. We don't want to cut all the way there. We want to give it a quarter of an inch, okay? But so I'm just kind of scoot it that way so that the quarter inch line is coming right in that seam corner and the 45 degree angle is also sitting on that seam. So what you're seeing right here is actually our new quilt edge. Who is scared? Not me. <laughs> because I already have a quilt. <laughs> Why would I be scared? <laughs> All right, so if you want to mark this first, you can do that, but I'm just going to go ahead and cut it so you can see the logic happening. I'm going <laughs> to not cut it on the line. Sorry, people. Okay. Doo -doo -doo. I do all my worst work on camera. I already warned you. And then basically, I can just scoot down because I've got enough of that line cut now that I can trust my edge. Okay, but that is how we create that straight edge. So if you can imagine this whole thing is all put together, you're gonna need to turn the quilt and repeat that three more times. And then once you've done that, that's when you can put your triangles in place, okay? And if when you put your triangle in place up here, if it ends up being, if it ends up that this bias edge of your triangle is a little longer than your trimmed edges, that's totally fine. You can still find the center of this and that's where you want to place it on the center of this and put it on. And if it's going out a little bit more on each side, this is why I say don't sew this yet. You can go ahead and trim a continuous straight edge along all corners of your quilt before the final step of putting these doohickeys in the corner, okay? So that is the mess that gets created um, trying to show precision to you. So I hope that you guys have um, found the booklet very helpful, but I also hope that you have found these videos helpful. They're really fun for me to do. Um, if any questions come in later on this post, once I get it posted, um, I'll do my best to come back and answer those if you have any questions. And um, something else that I wanted to mention is yesterday on my Instagram, I created a post 
basically um, postponing yesterday's live to today. But I also wanted to take a poll of your favorite way to do um, these clubs in terms of like the interaction and these live tip sessions. Um, because we all know that like you can take your kit and your booklet and you can head off to the races and make this quilt. I just think it's nice to have a practical um, kind of real life look at how I perform some of these um, features of the quilt. And also depending on, you know, the social media aspect, when we do these clubs on social media, whether it's on Facebook or whether it's on Instagram, there's always the opportunity for interaction between all the people that are participating as well. And very often I'll see some tips from other people like, oh, I did this part that way that I learned new things. And so I think that's really cool. Um, I'm, I've done this for four years now. The first three years we did on a Facebook page. I know a lot of people are like, ah, I hate Facebook. I don't even ever get on Facebook. And I wouldn't want that to prevent them from gaining something extra, this kind of extra feature that we add to the clubs um, just because they don't have Facebook. And then some people don't have Instagram. So I kind of put a poll on my um, Instagram post yesterday. So go back to yesterday's post and give feedback if you like. I kind of gave three options of like, what's your favorite way to participate in these clubs? Is it with a, with a private Facebook page where you basically have to ask for permission to join? Not a big deal, but it is one more step. Um, on Facebook, you know, I can post all these videos, but then everyone that's a member of the club can also post videos and also post their tips. Um, I think some negative feedback that I get back about Facebook is that sometimes it can be hard to find just like the meat of the club, like find the um, posts if they're, um, depending on how the page is organized, to find the actual posts that are teaching you something apart from the posts where everyone is sharing. Um, and then the second choice I gave was Instagram, which is what we did this year, which was live. I thought that the interaction of live questions as I'm working could be helpful, but I don't find that a lot of people ask questions in Instagram. And then the third option I gave that I wanted your feedback on is maybe this is just sitting on my website. These videos are produced, edited, and loaded on the website and released every month. And so you can kind of just set aside all the social media stuff and just go have some engagement with me, um, watching me provide all these different tips. Or maybe it's a hybrid. I think that um, if you'll see some of the comments and the feedback that's already there, it's all over the place. Some people want Facebook, some people want Instagram, and some people just want it on a website. Um, but I'm just kind of looking for um, what works best for everyone. And it could be that, you know, we find a way when we do clubs in the future to put it in a couple different places so you can have your choice. Someone said website. Website. Someone <laughs> said website. We have another vote for website. So um, I just want you to know that my goal is that everyone that wants to participate in making this has a place to do it. Do we have another comment? Another website. Another website. And um, and that some people, I understand that some people really like the social interaction and some people just want to do it on their own time and in their own space. And so um, my goal is not necessarily having the most possible people doing this. My goal is to make it accessible to everyone who does want to participate. So I really appreciate your feedback. And there's a giveaway opportunity if you provide feedback on yesterday's post, but I'm not going to be counting the comments from this live, okay? So if you want to give, enter the giveaway and provide feedback, um, please do so on yesterday's post. It's a picture of the corner of the quilt with my hand on it. That's how you'll recognize it. <laughs> and oh, two things not to forget. Um, the relay quilt is what I did with the scraps and that's now a $12 PDF on my website that's going to show you everything um, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show you the method that I use to create the relay quilt, that pattern. It is a pattern, but everyone's is going to turn out a little bit different, which I think is so cool, depending on how your scraps end up. So I really designed and we wrote the pattern um, so that it can accommodate using these scraps or starting fresh with some brave 
um, with like just a quarter yard brave collection. You could do it with a fat quarter collection plus a few of the Love Always fabrics that are included. But that's on the website now if you go to AnnaMariaHorner.com and just click on Shopping Anna Maria. It's under Quilt Patterns. It's a download. Have fun with that. And then also, if you're trying to plan um, the finishing of your quilt, if you haven't seen the Brave backing, this is what it looks like. So it really kind of is similar to the surprise fabric that is in the center of these little medallions and right here. It's just a bigger version of that surprise fabric um, and it's 108 inches wide so it makes your life a little easier. You don't have to seam it. Um, a lot of shops have this as well and there's also a Brave Orofill collection if you wanted to use um, some of the 12 weights for doing some hand quilting or doing your label or some special embellishments or just treating yourself. So thank you so, so much to everyone that has joined the club and um, I appreciate your bravery. It's been really fun. And um, as I said, just leave me any comments or questions and I'm looking forward to interacting and answering them for you soon. Over and out, thank you.